Within minutes, an alert spreads through astronomy networks globally. A new object appears on the Atlas survey screens in Chile. Within six hours, observatories across four continents adjust their schedules. This response is unusual for a comet. By the second week, over 200 telescopes worldwide focus on a single moving point. Something unanticipated is unfolding in real time. The alert level rises first to elevated, then critical. By mid-July, mission control whispers reach a level 5 designation, an unprecedented status never used before for any known interstellar visitor, including Oumuamua in 2017 or Borisov in 2019. Level 5 indicates multiple unusual anomalies accumulating, stressing natural explanations beyond their limits. This prompts every available instrument to focus intently on the object before it disappears forever. NASA's James Webb Space Telescope breaks its planned observations on August 6. Hubble joins the effort, as does the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope in Chile. The newest infrared space observatory, SphereX, shifts its entire mission. Ground stations from Palomar to Gemini South to Apache Point consume observation time intensely. Amateur astronomers coordinate continuous 24-7 watches. Over 4,000 precise positional measurements stream in from 227 observatories, marking a global cooperation crossing borders, budgets, and scientific competition. The object is officially named 3I Atlas, indicating the third confirmed interstellar visitor. Its orbit is hyperbolic, not elliptical, confirming it came from elsewhere in the galaxy and passes through our solar system just once. Following its close pass near the Sun in late October, it will accelerate away back into interstellar space. This is a one-time opportunity for study. If this object were normal, no schedules would be disrupted. So why assign level 5? Within weeks of discovery, 3i Atlas defies every expectation of what an interstellar comet should be. Its chemistry is odd, its motion unusual. Its size defies probability, and its trajectory raises uncomfortable questions, prompting quiet calculation. The scientific scramble is no longer just about data. It's about understanding the object's true nature before it vanishes. Astronomers use a scoring system for interstellar objects based on five critical aspects, non-gravitational acceleration, volatile chemistry, metal signatures, orbital geometry, and early activity distance, quantitative metrics with no room for guesswork. Oumuamua exhibited strong non-gravitational acceleration without visible outgassing, a major anomaly. Borisov showed typical comet behavior with water-rich coma and carbon monoxide. It scored zero anomalies and was scientifically unremarkable besides its rarity. Three I-Atlas lights up the anomaly chart across multiple criteria. Its non-gravitational acceleration is under 15 meters per day squared, unusually low since comets usually change course from gas jets. The explanation is mass. This object must be massive, likely a nucleus around 5 kilometers across, comparable to Hale-Bopp and far larger than either Oumuamua or Borisov. Such a large interstellar comet appearing so soon defies odds, as statistically we'd expect many more small ones detected first. The volatile composition is striking. Early spectra from James Webb and SphereX reveal 95% carbon dioxide and only 5% water, the reverse of most comets in our solar system. Carbon dioxide ice indicates formation in an extremely cold part of space, far beyond where water freezes, yet this ratio remains unprecedented. Metal analysis reveals further strangeness. The Very Large Telescope identifies nickel vapor in the coma, but no iron, though these metals normally co-occur because they sublime at similar temperatures and form together in supernovae. Separating them naturally requires specialized chemistry unknown in space. One research team noted that this separation is known only in industrial alloy processes on Earth, which is deeply unusual, but not proof of artificial origin. The orbital path adds more intrigue. Three I Atlas approaches at about 5 degrees off the ecliptic plane, the main orbit plane of the solar system's planets. While interstellar objects can come from any direction, Oumuamua arrived at 33 degrees and Borisov at 44 degrees. This object's path threads almost directly through the planetary plane, passing near Mars in early October, Venus in November, and close to Jupiter's orbit in March 2026. This alignment is statistically rare, but not impossible. Early activity also stands out. When discovered on July 1st, 
3 I Atlas was already outgassing at 4.5 astronomical units from the Sun beyond Jupiter's orbit. Most comets remain inactive until about 3 Australian dollars. Water ice doesn't sublimate so far out, but carbon dioxide and possibly other volatiles do, explaining why the coma was visible from discovery. Each of these five anomalies, massive size, carbon dioxide dominance, nickel without iron, planetary plane trajectory, and early. Distant activity could be individually explained by natural causes, but together their combined probability shifts dramatically. One anomaly is curious, two are interesting, five demand the unprecedented level five alert. Science does not jump to wild claims, but instead pursues tests and data. Each anomaly is a defined test. Does 3 I behave like a comet, or does it require a new category? The challenge now is to apply every possible test before this visitor disappears. Two forthcoming tests can rapidly clarify the mystery, both inexpensive and definitive. The first is polarimetry, measuring how light polarized by dust varies with angle reveals grain size, shape, and composition. Normal comets follow predictable curves due to their fluffy ice rock dust mixtures. A deviation would suggest unusual dust properties or unknown chemistry. Ground telescopes can conduct this quickly without space missions. The second test is stellar occultation. As 3 I Atlas crosses in front of background stars, it temporarily blocks their light. Observers worldwide can measure the duration and chord of these light dips, revealing the object's size and shape with precision. Combining multiple occultation cords allows astronomers to map the exact shape of an object, a technique that has accurately measured asteroid sizes before any spacecraft visits. For 3 I Atlas, a well-observed occultation could yield the most precise measurement of its nucleus radius, surpassing even telescope imaging at such distances. Prediction maps for these occultations are already spreading, and amateur astronomers with 20 to 30 centimeters telescopes can participate, turning casual observers into valuable data gatherers. These widely used, straightforward methods reduce uncertainties and provide concrete numerical results, with observation opportunities forthcoming while the comet remains visible. On October 3rd, observation geometry changes significantly as Mars aligns for an optimal view of 3I Atlas, which passes roughly 0.19 astronomical units, about 28 million kilometers from Mars. Spacecraft orbiting Mars, including the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, equipped with high-resolution cameras designed for submeter imaging of Mars' surface, can capture details of the comet's coma and possibly distinguish the nucleus from surrounding gas. Though not offering extremely fine detail, this close approach can refine size estimates, clarifying whether the nucleus is closer to one or five kilometers across, resolving current uncertainties. Venus provides another vantage point on November 3rd when the comet passes 65 cents away, contributing additional angles to reconstruct the comet's 3D structure. Jupiter's turn comes on March 16, 2026, after perihelion, when 3I Atlas sweeps within 36 cents of the giant planet. This proximity presents opportunities for spacecraft like Juno to intercept the comet's trajectory if NASA approves the necessary adjustments. Mars's close approach will offer the first crucial alternative angle in just days. A puzzling observation on September 7, 2025, during a total lunar eclipse, revealed 3 I Atlas's coma glowing a distinctive green. While green glows are common in comets caused by diatomic carbon, C2, fluorescing under ultraviolet light, this comet shows almost no C2 in its spectra. Instead, cyanogen, another green-emitting molecule, was detected, but the typical carbon chains responsible for most cometary green emissions are significantly depleted. One study described 3I Atlas as among the most carbon chain depleted comets ever studied, making the strong green glow enigmatic. Two explanations remain viable. Either deeper C2 ice layers only began outgassing as the comet warmed closer to the sun, supported by later observations of water vapor signifying layer composition, or an unusual molecule mimicking green emission is active, though its spectral signatures remain incompletely analyzed. Both scenarios confirm unusual chemistry distinct from normal comets, which readily show carbon chains and straightforward color explanations. Thinking of the comet nucleus as a layered freezer, with CO2 ice near the surface and water ice deeper inside, suggests CO2 vaporizes first, producing an early coma rich in this gas. 
The usual green glow associated with carbon chains might come from components released later or different molecules altogether. This breakdown challenges standard comet models that assume synchronized sublimation and typical volatile ratios. This unique layering hints at a formation in an exceptionally cold environment, revealing clues about its stellar nursery billions of years ago, an alien recipe where every ingredient matters. Level 5 status matters because it instantly reallocates expensive telescope time on elite instruments like James Webb, Hubble, the Very Large Telescope, and SphereX, all of which prioritize this object over year-planned observations. This rare target of opportunity protocol activates only when multiple independent anomalies arise to justify diverting resources. Such sustained anomalies also accelerate mission planning with engineers modeling intercept scenarios within months rather than years. For example, a rapid retargeting proposal for Juno appeared within weeks of discovery, an extraordinary turnaround. Nickel detection adds another puzzle. Typically, nickel and iron vaporize together in comet comas, forming inseparable pairs originated from supernova dust grains. However, three I Atlas's spectra showed strong nickel lines, but little to no iron, a pattern unknown in natural settings, but known in earth metallurgy, where industrial processes separate these metals under specific temperatures and pressures. This nickel trick is analogous to making nickel carbonyl gas while leaving iron behind. Though a natural explanation involves formation in a deep, cold, carbon monoxide-rich environment with precise gradients, such chemistry hasn't been clearly observed in comets before. This anomaly suggests three I atlas formed under star system conditions radically different from our solar system's comets. The comet's orbital path further intrigues astronomers. It approaches at an inclination of about 5 degrees relative to the solar system's ecliptic plane, nearly planar compared to Oumuamua and Borisov's angles of 33 degrees and 44 degrees, respectively. This near coplanarity allows valuable observation opportunities from Mars, Venus, and Jupiter at various points along its trajectory, aiding triangulation for size and compositional studies. Whether this alignment is mere chance, a selection bias based on detection methods, or a clue to a galactic origin related to the thick disk remains uncertain. Unlikely events do occur, but the unique geometry adds another layer to this comet's mysterious profile. Multiple cords from stellar occultations can be combined to map the true shape of an object precisely, a method proven effective in determining asteroid sizes before spacecraft encounters. For three, I Atlas, even one well-observed occultation can determine its nucleus radius more accurately than distant telescope images. Prediction charts for these events are already available, enabling amateur astronomers with 20 to 30 centimeters scopes to contribute, turning them into valuable data collectors. These standard scientific methods dramatically reduce speculation and provide concrete measurements while the comet remains visible. On October 3, 2025, the comet's trajectory brings it within about 28 million kilometers 19 cents, of Mars, allowing Mars orbiters like the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter to capture images of the coma and possibly distinguish the nucleus from surrounding gas. Such observations can help resolve the size uncertainty from about 1 kilometer to 5 kilometers in diameter. Later, the comet passes Venus at 65 cents on November 3, 2025, offering different observing angles and approaches Jupiter's orbit on March 16, 2026 at 36 cents, opening potential for spacecraft observations. A unique plan is underway to repurpose NASA's Juno spacecraft, currently orbiting Jupiter, to intercept 3I Atlas during its close approach in March 2026. Engineering studies published in peer-reviewed literature show that a critical engine burn in early September 2025 could push Juno out of orbit via a gravity-assisted jupiter oberth maneuver, setting it on an intersecting path with the comet. At closest approach, Juno could pass within tens of millions of kilometers, close enough for its infrared spectrometer to study heat and composition, ultraviolet spectrograph to detect gas emissions invisible from Earth, particle detectors to analyze dust, and cameras to resolve coma details. While not a close flyby like Rosetta's encounter, this interaction would yield unique data unattainable from Earth or orbit. This maneuver requires careful planning, considering available fuel, mission priorities, and risk, as Juno's primary mission is complete, but the retarget would commit it permanently away from Jupiter. If this does not proceed, the situation underscores the need for a small, rapid-response interstellar spacecraft, around 200 to 300 kilograms with essential instruments, ready to launch quickly to study future unusual interstellar objects. 
This approach is feasible with current technology and would revolutionize how humanity studies interstellar visitors. Scientific scrutiny continues separating fact from speculation through hard experimental tests. Searches for coherent narrowband radio emissions tied to comet rotation, signaling possible transmissions, have yielded silence so far as expected for natural objects. Polarimetry and light curve analyses find no specular glints indicating metallic artificial surfaces and measurable thrust correlates with active outgassing and mass, unlike Oumuamua's unexplained acceleration. Isotopic ratio studies of elements like carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen may mark the comet's origin in a distant stellar nursery, valuable for understanding galactic chemical diversity, though not implying. Artificiality. These rigorous, checkable tests prevent hype and promote grounded curiosity. Every interstellar visitor enriches human knowledge, from cometary chemistry shaping exoplanet atmospheres to dust properties informing spacecraft shielding and rapid response capabilities key for planetary defense. The arrival velocity, 68 km s, perihelion distance, one Australian dollar and 36 cents, size estimates currently ranging from under one kilometer to about five kilometers, the unprecedented high carbon dioxide to water ratio, and the near ecliptic five degrees inclination are core metrics guiding ongoing study. Occultation campaigns over the next two months offer an excellent chance to precisely measure the size and shape of 3i Atlas from Earth, as several background stars align with its path. Observers worldwide, including amateur astronomers with modest telescopes, can time these starlight dips to gather cord measurements that refine the comet's shape model. This grassroots involvement turns viewers into real contributors to science, reducing uncertainty quickly while the comet remains visible. If NASA's Juno spacecraft had performed its maneuver by mid-September for a close intercept, official updates or trajectory confirmations would have followed by now. In the event no retarget occurred, it underscores the need for a ready rapid intercept spacecraft bus to study such interstellar objects promptly in the future. Meanwhile, SETI radio monitoring remains active through perihelion and beyond, although no signals are expected. Historically, Oumuamua arrived in 2017 late for extensive observations and showed peculiar non-gravitational acceleration sparking debate, while Borisov in 2019 behaved as a normal comet with a typical water-rich coma. Three I Atlas stand apart, discovered early, active through approach, chemically distinct, and massive, providing months of lead time and a wealth of data. The Level 5 alert differs from routine comet tracking by mobilizing a global response with over 200 observatories contributing, space telescopes like Hubble and JWST dedicating time, and mission planners modeling possible intercepts. Discovery and tracking are handled by large survey telescopes like Atlas and PanStars, composition and thermal data come from space assets, and ground-based giants supply high-resolution spectra, while smaller telescopes supply astrometry and photometry. The upcoming Vera C. Rubin Observatory will revolutionize discoveries, predicting dozens of interstellar objects yearly, most faint and small, but some unusual enough to maintain level 5 responses. This growing capability means today's high-stakes scramble for 3i Atlas sets a framework for handling future events faster and more systematically. Data firmly established 3i Atlas's high mass, unusual CO2, dominated chemistry, nickel emission without iron, trajectory near the ecliptic, early distant activity, and an unprecedented green glow that defies typical comet behavior. Some interpret these as possible signs of engineered origin due to convenient alignment, industrial-like chemistry, and size improbability. Others explain them as natural phenomena arising from exotic, old stellar environments, peculiar thermal histories, and statistical chance. The truth emerges from rigorous testing, experiments measuring dust polarimetry, stellar occultations for size, Mars flyby imaging, perihelion spectrometry for volatile evolution, and continuous radio listening. These five metrics precisely define the discussion, separating facts from speculation while observations continue through perihelion and beyond. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter Imaging starting October 3rd promises vivid resolution of the nucleus size debate. Post-perihelion spectra track late volatile releases that may reveal whether the nickel-iron anomaly persists or not.